welcome to this week's edition of MFB News. I hope this finds you really fantastically well and that you've had a really, really good week. So what have we got in store for you this week? We're going to do our usual roundup of um, what's been happening with swap rates, lender pricing changes. Um, some good, some bad in there, I'm not going to lie. A <laughs> um, bit of a mixed bag again this week, but a couple of interesting um, new releases that have come out which are were definitely worth a mention. We're then going to move on to talk about the latest um, clampdown or proposed clampdown on Airbnbs and then we're going to be finally wrapping up by sharing with you the latest buy to let barometer which is um, essentially a piece of research which is conducted by the Mortgage Works. They go out, they survey um, loads and loads of landlords um, and really find out kind of how they're feeling about the market and what their intentions are for the coming 12 months or so. So it always makes really interesting reading as I always say when you're a landlord it's not like you have um, a lunch break with lots of other landlords where you go and discuss what you're up to so I think always knowing what your peers um, kind of have in their minds in terms of their strategy going forwards it's always really really interesting to hear. Okay so in terms of pricing and lender changes so first of all just to touch on swap rates and what's going on there so um, disappointingly there hasn't really been much in terms of movement from um, this time last week so um, two-year swap rates are currently um, sitting at around 4.5% Go back one week ago, 4.25, um, one month ago, 4.088. So um, two-year pricing has actually increased at the moment by circa 0.5%. In terms of five-year swaps, um, sitting at just under 4%, so 3.960 is the most up-to-date data that I have. And I should caveat this by saying that it is currently Tuesday um, evening, quite late in the evening now. Um, I normally record this on a Wednesday morning, but unfortunately my diary is such tomorrow that I just can't get it done. So um, we are a little bit kind of early, but um, it's really five year swap rates just under 4%. Um, one week ago, they were just under 3.7 um, and roughly the same one month ago. So you can see that pricing has ticked up and that's really reflected in the changes that we're seeing from most lenders at the moment. So in terms of how that kind of does segue into lender pricing, um, we have seen a, um, a mini wave, not a kind of tsunami, of lenders pricing up in the last week or so's time, or week or so, sorry. Um, so first of all, we've had Vida Home Loans, they've increased their rates by 0.4%, Accord Mortgages um, increases of up to 0.3%. Um, MT Finance up by 0.1, the Coventry up by 0.13%. So um, generally the direction of travel is definitely upwards. Now there has been an announcement um, just before I start recording this at Santander, we're dropping their buy to let rates. They are a lender that hasn't kind of aggressively repriced recently. So maybe they just had some wiggle room in terms of their margins to be able to bring their rates down a bit. Now, interestingly, we have seen um, actually Paragon release a couple of new limited edition rates um, which are actually quite good. Um, so they've got rates now from 4.65% with a 5% fee for standard properties and 4.9% for HMOs. Um, now, I know the arrangement fees do put people off, um, but actually yeah, what we always say in mortgage business is you need to look at the overall cost of the product in the round. So if I pay um, an interest rate of say 4.65% for five years plus the 5% arrangement fee, what has that cost me in total? Is that more or less competitive than I can get somewhere else essentially. Um, so rather than just focusing on the arrangement fee, which I do appreciate, um, does feel rather eye-watering, um, just on a sort of standalone basis, factor it into your overall cost of borrowing. Now in terms of Paragon, we talk about them often on this video. So they are a really fantastic lender, um, very much the landlord's friend is how I describe them. So lending to individuals, lending to limited companies, layered companies are fine. Don't mind how many properties you've got in the background. You do need to earn £25,000 a year. Um, it's the one kind of bit of um, criteria that probably sets them apart from some of their competitors. Um, but like I said, they don't mind how many properties you've got in the background. And they can do um, day one remortgages and all sorts of really great stuff. HMOs and multi-units, up to 20 self-contained units or letting rooms. These are lumpy, lumpy properties as well. So actually, um, keeping all the kind of fairly um, unique elements of their offering in mind, it's actually a very, very competitive set of rates that they've bought out. Now, the other change we've seen in the last week is that Lambe has... Um, Lambe have recently started doing what they call AVM mortgages, which is essentially where there is... Um, no requirement for a valuer to go out and inspect the property in person. They're using a um, essentially desktop valuation, an AVM model. Now, what they don't do is make this um, kind of part of their day to day product set. They have a separate set of products for any, any type of AVM lending. And just because you simply apply for the AVM product doesn't mean you're going to actually be eligible for um, an AVM valuation. Um, just a big kind of word of warning there. Um, it really depends on a kind of series of tests that they make about the property as to whether it passes. Um, you know, the kind of the criteria, the quality to enable them to be able to use an AVM valuation. Why do people like AVM valuations? 
Um, first of all, it's quicker than waiting for a valuer to go out and inspect the property. Um, secondly, it can be less disruptive if you've got tenants in situ. Um, having to make appointments for the valuer to come out um, you know, can be disruptive for tenants and we don't like upsetting our great tenants. Um, and then thirdly, some people just kind of think they seem to be of the opinion you get a better valuation on AVMs than you do on a full physical valuation. I'm not personally convinced about that, if I'm brutally honest. Um, but that's, you know, kind of another perception that people have and why they like AVMs. So if you are eligible for an AVM product with Lamb Bay, the rates are not bad at all. So um, fixed rates from 5.69% with no arrangement fee at all whatsoever. And they can do these for limited companies and also individuals. The criteria, very, very similar to Paragon in terms of no maximum number of properties in the background. Um, they're very happy to lend to um, limited companies, layered limited companies. They have to be SPVs. Um, but they can kind of accept slightly more quirky structures. They can do day one remortgages and all those kinds of things. So really, really good to see um, Lamb Bay introduce some competitive rates in their AVM product set. Now, in terms of where this leaves us, and I thought it probably be worth just doing a bit of a roundup because we've been seeing pricing largely increasing over the last few weeks. So kind of where does this leave us in terms of rates more broadly? Now, when I was putting this together, um, what I didn't want to do is quote you the cheapest interest rates that come with the massive arrangement fees because there was a two-year fixed rate, for example, at two point something percent, but the arrangement fee was 10% of the loan amount. Um, I don't feel comfortable giving you those rates as a kind of good guide. So um, what I've done is I've chosen um, products which have what I would call kind of like less shocking <laughs> arrangement fees to 3% essentially. Um, so if you're an individual uh, borrowing against a very, very straightforward property, two-year fixed rates from 3.79%. Um, five years from 3.99%. If you're a limited company, um, pricing here, two years from 4.84 and five years from 4.89%. And all of the products I've just given you would come with a 3% fee. So that's kind of where things are starting from on average at the moment. So I think it's just going to be a case of let's just kind of watch and wait what happens over the next few weeks in terms of swap rates. You know, the lenders aren't um, happy about having to put their rates up. You know, they want to be lending money as much as the next um, kind of guys so actually they will be looking very keen to drop their pricing down as soon as they can we just need the capital markets to really settle down um, personally I can't see that happening for a few weeks now so um, the advice really kind of remains the same if you are in the market for a mortgage you can apply for one now and if the lender drops their rates down between application and completion you can move on to a cheaper interest rate or that lender's cheaper interest rate um, I'm just doing a mortgage myself with fleet mortgages. Um, I've done exactly the same thing. I had to pay a um, fee to change onto the cheaper rate of £199. It was worth it. Um, I would have saved that money, but not all lenders do charge you a fee as well. So I think it's really worth it at the moment because we are still in very uncertain times. Booking yourself A rates, you've got a worst case position, knowing that if your lender does drop their pricing down before completion, you have the ability to move on to a cheaper deal. Okay, now for those of you who are um, holiday debt landlords or indeed are thinking about going into this um, there was an announcement in the last couple of days from Michael Gove where he's announced major new proposals that would require um, planning permission for short-term letting um, properties such as Airbnb. Now just to kind of backtrack slightly in terms of short-term lets why do people actually do them in the first place? Um, so there's really a couple of reasons that you know or two key reasons as we see it so first of all the yields that you get um, running a property as a holiday let broadly speaking are more um, higher um, than if you were to rent them on a traditional AST basis, so the yields are bigger. The second thing is that holiday lets are not taxed um, under Section 24, um, therefore you continue to pay tax on holiday let income in the kind of old school way, essentially. So some people opted to switch their properties from traditional AST letting to, for example, Airbnb when Section 24 came in um, because this was more favourable from a taxation perspective. And I just need to really caveat this because my compliance department will have a conniption. We're not giving tax advice by saying this if you are thinking about going into this type of letting, do you get advice from a suitably qualified person? That would not be me, <laughs> incidentally. Um, but in terms of this news, what does it mean? So essentially um, what they're saying is that those people who want to let their properties on a short-term let basis, they're going to need to essentially get permission from the local authority to do so. And that means their property um, would fall under a new uh, sort of category of use. Now, um, they are saying that this would not apply to those people who want to rent their homes out for 90 days or less per year. And actually, this does go on. So there are people who, for example, um, in the summer holidays might disappear off, you know, travelling for a couple of months and they choose to rent their properties out on a kind of short term net basis during that period of time. This would not apply to these guys. This is for those people who are doing it for more than 90 days. 
um, per year. Now, in terms of the sentiment about why this is necessary, so I think um, it's fair to say that there is a kind of um, concern that people, particularly those local residents of those very kind of obvious tourist destinations, so think places like the Lake District and Cornwall, local residents cannot afford to rent properties in their local area because the properties that are there are being let out on holiday basis. So it's essentially it's meaning that people and um, local residents are not able to afford homes in their neighbourhoods. And so what the kind of plan here is to do is try and stave off um, areas being kind of awash with short term lets to make sure there's suitable amounts of housing stock available for the local residents as well. So that's the kind of sentiment behind this, which actually, you know, kind of makes sense. Now, in terms of um, how this is going to shake out in the longer term, so I think it's going to go into consultation, it's then got to be signed off. So this is by no means a kind of um, slam dunk for Michael Gove, um, but actually I do have a funny feeling on this one, that this one could actually pass through um, fairly easily because it is quite a contentious subject at the moment. Now, what we don't know, and this is the kind of key thing, is if you do want to do a holiday let, how hard it's going to be to obtain the appropriate permissions. And as always with these things, it is that the devil is in the detail. So I think we're just going to have to watch this space. But I think it's just really particularly important for those of you who are contemplating um, going into this space in the future, um, just knowing that this is on the horizon. And it's something you're going to need to be incredibly mindful of. And finally for this week, the mortgage webs have released their latest buy to let barometer. Sorry, I can my teeth in it is late in the evening. Apologies. Um, and actually, um, I really enjoy reading these because it's always really interesting to understand how landlords are feeling about being a landlord and what their plans are and that kind of stuff. Um, and the report is actually more positive than it was last time. I'm going to caveat that with the word slightly more positive, but it is more positive nonetheless. Um, so the first statistic that I think is worth sharing with you is the number of landlords who are planning on buying a property in the next 12 months has increased. So 11% of respondents to the survey are planning on acquiring a property in the next 12 months. What's interesting is that the number of landlords who are planning to sell a property in the next 12 months has also increased. Obviously a different section of people I'm imagining. Um, so that's now at 30%. So 30% of landlords are planning on selling a property in the next 12 months, which really kind of just shows how the housing shortage in terms of private rental stock has just been exacerbated as time goes on. Now, for those landlords who um, responded, they uh, were asked a question about their optimism for their own letting business. Um, and actually, 33% of landlords were saying they're feeling good or very good. And that has increased on the previous quarter. So thumbs up for that one. In terms of landlord confidence for capital gains and rental yields, um, so that has actually increased. So in quarter four, 2022, 22% were feeling um, kind of good about capital gains. Now it's 25% and rental yields 37% were feeling good. And now to have to lean around, it's 46%. So the number of people who are feeling good about capital gains and also rental yields is increasing. So that's really, really positive. Now, in terms of tenant demand, because as landlords, we always want there to be good tenant demand for our properties because when we have a tenant move out, we want to be able to relet it easily enough. Um, actually, um, the total number of landlords who are saying that tenant demand has increased significantly or slightly is sitting at 63%. So again, that's a really, really strong figure. So I think in terms of um, the kind of takeaways from this report, I would say cautiously optimistic would be how I'd summarise that. So I think landlords are, I mean, there's still a whole bunch of people selling properties. There's no escaping that fact. But actually, for those people who are in the game, um, they're feeling more confident about yields, more confident about capital gains, and they're feeling more optimistic about their own listing business and they're seeing tenant demand increase as well. So actually, um, I think, yeah, cautiously optimistic is how I would summarise um, shortly this quarter's survey. And that's us done for another week. Thank you so much for joining us. And as always, you know the deal. If you have any questions, we'd love to hear from you. 0345 345 6788. Or do go and have a look at our lovely, shiny new website. It is quite wonderful, I can assure you. Um, there's lots and lots of information on there, calculators, case studies, all those things that we know that you guys absolutely love. So have a fantastic week. Look after yourselves. I hope it's going to get chilly again at the end of this week. So do wrap up warm um, and I'll catch you again same time next week.